Hi everyone, the Lone Wolf here and welcome back to EVE Talk, your weekly look at the market in EVE Online. As always, we will actually start with a little bit of news and this was actually, in my opinion, a pretty good week for news and development in EVE Online. Uh, I would say, first of all, just yesterday, CCP did what for me was an unexpected live stream talking a little bit about the evolution uh, that's happening at the moment in EVE Online with, for instance, the UI changes, the DirectX 12 changes um, and, well, uh, the confirmation from my point point of view that a very very heavy focus for the development of CCP at the moment is still that new player experience and that's probably cutting into a lot of their potential development uh, so they've got the new air experience which is this one the air career program uh, for oh, it's per character apparently I did do a little bit on uh, my other character and let's see how could I yeah there we go uh, let's just do floating that's a lot better the standard should be floating ccp not just a full screen screen but all right uh, i think it's interesting it's definitely a little bit of a, a carrot on a stick uh, that uh, i'm going to uh, look around in uh, into and uh, and to see what i can do what i want to do uh, might even uh, entice me to to join like some proving grounds and things like that to get a couple of pvp check boxes and and all of that good stuff so it's interesting but yeah they kind of confirmed that well they're now going to be working on the career agents which is uh, apparently described as a cliff for a lot of new players that once you go through the air story then you gotta get started on the career agents and that's like well welcome to eve welcome to the sandbox it's up to you to decide what you want to do to get motivated and to do stuff and uh, that's uh, something that they're working on as well well it, during the rest of the week we got a video from the discourse i believe it is uh, that also talked about the situation between galente and caldari with faction warfare so i really think that uh, we can be relatively sure that the storyline uh, the the new way that ssb wants to uh, come out with expansion type content uh, will be centered around the faction warfare feature uh, but uh, there were even some hints at well there's going to be some drama with Eden Com, potentially the Triglavians and things like that as well uh, so it's going to be interesting and um I'm definitely looking forward to getting a little bit more concrete information and I'm probably uh, going to help my Galente brothers on that front. And we also got a surprise release of the monthly economic numbers. They came out on like the 1st uh, of July for the month of June. Um, kind of not good news if you're looking for explosive economic growth and things like that. Uh, especially the uh, velocity of ISK is, is down to its lowest point ever so that in my opinion means that there's really not a lot of trade happening uh, I really think that it's it's basically the summer slum that's coming uh, into play and then we will also have the higher real life prices for stuff like Plex which is a huge chunk of the daily trade in EVE Online of course and uh, you know uh, we, you can you can say that uh, what's the solution for higher prices well it's higher prices but it does come at basically cutting down demand because prices are higher and that's I think what we're seeing here as well uh, just a small reduction in the amount of plex traded will have a huge impact on the amount of isk that changes hands over a certain period of time my read on all of that is that that's what's happening um you know you can see this as a bad thing but for me personally right if you think that eve online will be here for the longer period of time this is a great time uh, because all your efforts into the game are basically amplified by all those players that are well out there on summer holiday uh, or are taking a break from EVE Online or are taking it easy. So for me, uh, I think I can uh, get into prep time at this point but more on that probably in the Sunday recap uh, let's take a quick look at the new Eden store before we get started see what's happening over here so we still have the Elite XIX Omega bundle if you want some extra skins on all of that but other than that not noticing any sales here and then for the services yeah nothing uh sale wise to report just the regular bundles all right let's move to the market then and i took a little bit uh to uh, get it back on uh, to not be transparent but i managed to figure it out so to get started with pilot services coming in at 440. There we go. And as always, we will start with Plex. Here is the Plex chart. So you can obviously see on this one year chart, we are at a very high price point with a jolt to the market happening right here. Uh, Mid-April, which was the announcement from CCP that prices for... Um, 
uh, fourplex for subscriptions were going up this of course is then translated into higher plex prices we're still hovering just below 3.75 million but you can see that those maximum prices are already starting to go back up as well heading potentially towards uh, 4 million and then this is what i was talking about since then you can see that the daily volumes have taken a little bit of a beating especially in the last two weeks or so and that has a huge impact on the velocity of isk in general then we've got the multiple pilot train certificate oh i should actually go take a quick look at the actual prices at the moment let's take a look outside of jita and in jita and so you can see that at the moment sellers are coming in at 3.8 million but they're heading for uh, oh no actually that's quite reasonable there's a decent amount of supply going all the way up to 3.9 million so i'd say we're decently supplied we shouldn't expect uh, too many price shocks at this point anymore and then 3.65 million almost for the buyers they have to uh, get up there in the price as well in order to be able to trigger a buy order so i don't see a complete breakout to 4 million probably due to the uh, lower activity uh, and then it will all depend on fall on what CCP manages to hype up uh, after the summer slump to see where things will go from here. But I do expect that basically here your opportunity to sell close to 4 million uh, has passed or is right now. I don't see us breaking out massively at this point either uh, but yeah the trade volumes are obviously down quite significantly then we have the multiple pilot train certificate uh, staying or heading back above 1.5 million billion so quite expensive again volumes have uh, really started to take a nosedive here as well uh, which has two sides i think to the story first one of course is what's happening with plex and real life money prices but also uh, this is already a small market and you can see here two big volume spikes that were actually sales by ccp that it takes a longer time for this market to fully absorb them and we're basically getting to this point as well so volumes are heading back when it, we've got high price you get very low volumes in multiple pilot train certificates we're talking just less than 10 a day and uh, we're, we're getting back into that situation uh, 1.55 billion for the sellers almost 1.1 uh, 1.5 billion for the buyers as well so super narrow margin at these high prices and well unfortunately this will in all likeliness be very structural uh, because of the changes to real life prices and something like this could happen if ccp decides to come out with another sale but on the long term you have to realize that supply will have been reduced because of the amount of dollars euros whatever it is that is needed in order to bring them into the game uh, then we've got the skill extractor market following plex decently closely interesting to see and that we do have a bit of a downtrend after a later spike up to 450 million for the skill extractor so it is slightly different but what's really noticeable here as well last couple of weeks volumes heading towards 1250 on average where before we would be well between 1250 and 2500 a day for the skill extractor trades and so that is again big volumes on a much higher priced item very expensive uh, stuff so a lot of isk that's not trading hands again velocity of isk taking a big nosedive we're talking 433 million for the sellers 425 for 26 million for the buyers here so again very narrow margin uh, while there is still demand and you can see that's pretty strong demand because of the narrow margin it just has gone down in volumes because of the increased cost the impact on the injectors here are the large-scale injectors that are uh, climbing to one-year high points heading for 800 million isk at this point for the large-scale injectors sellers coming in at 793 797 is the next sell order and you can see that very close to 800 million is coming into play just on the front page we maybe 200 or so large-scale injectors and you're seeing 800 million for the sellers 743 for the buyers kind of interesting i did not expect this to uh, be doing so well uh, because we don't exactly have anything uh, timeline wise announcement wise that would indicate that you know skill points would be uh, needed for more veteran players that there's going to be new ships or new 
drastic technologies that need to be trained for uh, that that could actually give you an advantage to just getting them right away uh, but overall i guess the general pressure uh, is up and because of the general cost uh, you could also say that uh, skill points their value has increased because the subscription is more expensive and uh, that's probably going to be uh, in my opinion here the reason why we basically have this this perfect storm for large-scale injectors that they have since the announcement here in april gone straight up from 700 to 800 million isk here timing wise i would say uh, we could be close to the top if we see if we're looking at what Pl uh, plex is doing at the moment uh, and i actually am probably going to sell my large scale injector investment at this point as well i think i bought definitely below 700 could be just below 650 or something like that. i don't really remember what the uh, jumping point was but this is a very good chart in my opinion to be selling i could be wrong on that of course because we are talking a structural difference in supply demand in these pilot services but uh, this does feel like a very pronounced one year high point and close to 800 million is not a bad price to sell at then we get the small scale injectors that uh, can't, cannot do their own thing all that much although you can see here at the tail end already starting to crest as well made its way up to 160 million isk 161 for the sellers and 145 for the buyers bit of margin starting to open up there as well i think we could be again close to that top because of the summer slump that's coming in uh, at this point it's going to be interesting to see if i'm right or wrong on that but uh, i think i'm gonna sell then we've got the daily alpha injectors right here that all right a bit of a surprise to me went close to 50 million but is starting to also show signs of a little bit of strain and potentially going back down uh, let's i quickly want to touch here on the volumes you can see higher price volumes clearly going down as well with again uh, at least part of those higher prices going to be baked in structurally because of the higher cost of plex so that might be here to stay for the daily alpha injectors very different uh, you get the bump here due to the sale which brought us below 40 million but you can clearly see that the volumes are actually higher in the last month than they were before uh, and during the announcement of the higher real life prices so to me this also indicates that that low uh, the increased cost of everything real life related is pushing players into the alpha uh, clone play style uh, but the summer slump is here as well so you can see that those minimum prices have started to come down uh, too and so we're talking 48 million for the sellers 43 million for the buyers a bit of pressure which to me again is probably the summer slump then we've got the hypercore market that's also showing that first sign of strain that first uh, sign that tops might be formed here in these markets we went close to 400 than 50,000 early June and you can see that there is a bit of pressure mounting with five day moving average going below the 20 day moving average we're down to 400,000 for the sellers 380 for the buyers uh, if you're looking to liquidate some of these I think this is the time to do it again I may be completely wrong on that who knows what CCP announces during the summer that could uh, or what the, the war could do as well uh, all of a sudden so there's definitely scenarios where it doesn't work out but these charts to me are a good place to try to sell and uh, get liquid on some of those investments or at least part of them let's move on to the minerals then and see what's happening here we're talking uh, 1330 there we go as always we'll start with titanium and you can see that again um, we're trying to get back up a little bit moving somewhat sideways so this could be the exact reverse here trying to form a bottom if i'm not mistaken the uh, monthly economic report for june was showing that the mineral price index was increasing so the value of minerals was increasing at the moment but if you follow if talk you know that it's the nozick minerals that have done a real catch-up and have once again become the most expensive ones for high sake it's a real struggle but eventually perhaps that increased production uh, could increase demand enough to really uh, push the prices up at least we are i think starting to form a bottom here we're talking uh, for the sellers in gda 380 379 for the first one but yeah it's 380 for sellers of titanium 366 for the buyers we are always in a pretty close margin here so there is decently strong demand for our high sick efforts uh, it's just so that it's very ubiquitous of course very easy to get plenty of suppliers and as a result the 
price is pretty low. Think we can expect something similar for Pyrite. Yeah, last week we tried to get back to 10, give back a little bit of ground, but you can see that we're already flattening out at the tail end here as well. 920 for the sellers, 897, so almost 9 isk for the buyers as well. Volumes are very high here, hundreds of millions coming in by individual sell orders, so that supply is really present. That competition is basically present, but demand is decently good as well. And uh, again, a bit of bottom formation, I'm hoping uh, it could be happening here if there's some action in Nullsec because of the deployment of the Imperium and we get a summer slump. Uh, same story as what I was explaining right at the beginning. Well, those guys that stick around and mine in high sec might be looking at better prices because of the, that lower supply, but that uh, that increased demand potentially from null sec. And is Mixalon uh, doing the same thing? Yeah, starting to hover around 60. You can see a little bit of a bump in the last 10 days or so, uh, normalizing back. So we, we're not seeing a breakout or anything like that, but at least that pressure to go down to below 60, towards 50 or anything like that, that's not happening anymore. Those that bought this dip here at 50, I think did have a very good deal with a little bit of patience. I also think that uh, you can make more than what we're making at the moment. Almost 61 for the sellers, almost 60 for the buyers. Again, decently narrow margin and apparently a little bit harder to get those massive volumes to come in here. If we would get rid of this 24 million, uh, we could go back up uh, like a bump like this decently uh, quickly. So uh, Mixon showing a little bit of sign of strain, I would say as well on the supply side of things. So could be interesting. Then we've got our Isogen market, uh, my favorite, of course, kind of because I was somewhat predicting what would eventually uh, happen here and we're plateauing at 400 is here at the moment 398 for the sellers 383 for the buyers uh, we do get from that monthly economic report um, the information that pretty big mining operations uh, have started in uh, Pochven as well, which could explain why Isogen uh, is plateauing and why Noxium is so low at the moment because well they're of obviously, if we look at this chart, they're worth a lot to the players. And so some extra efforts into getting the Pochvin resources up and running uh, seems to be what uh, the players have responded with. And as a result, you now have to be a little bit careful as to what your expectations are with the prices. If we look at the big volumes, well, you gotta go up to uh, 416 for 10 million, 480 for 20 million units, and then 1200 for 200 million units that may turn out to be a little bit too optimistic uh, at this point i would say uh, because uh, of those new supplies that are coming online put uh, add on that that summer slump that could potentially also you know mean no, no exceptional demand or anything like that uh, we could you know be here for a pretty stable summer uh, all in all i would say and then we've got the Noxium chart, especially if that one stays low, which is it is at the moment, it's just bouncing off the 1000 ISK price range. Uh, then, you know, don't expect anything too drastic to happen in Isogen. Sellers are actually uh, going just below 1000 ISK for Noxium, 972 for the buyers here. So I would say uh, volumes up all of a sudden as well. Uh, yeah, this is Podgevin coming online. Those supply lines are coming online. One thing I would note on that is that if that ever becomes calculus within the war, I do feel like this is something that's relatively easy uh, to blockade, to really disrupt quite heavily. And so at the moment, we're in massive supplies, low prices, and there's a stable isogen. Uh, but if uh, the war gets hot uh, and uh, we start to see some disruption there. You could get quite some explosive price reactions in all of that as well, uh, which again, on this slump, uh, your efforts are not wasted, but I would just say if you're making Noxium or Isogen, I would not sell at the moment. I would hold on to at least most of that and, and wait for times where some conflict or something uh, could have an impact on those supplies. And that's when you'll probably get a much better opportunity uh, to sell. And then we've got Null6. So here is Zydrine. And these are, of course, uh, the reasons why, uh, in my opinion, the uh, 
mineral price index really started to go up again uh, you can see that here in may and then in june we went from 1250 to above 1500 isk uh, 1580 for the sellers 1516 for the buyers so back as a far more expensive mineral than zydrine uh, than um, uh, noxium for instance and then the mega side chart it did the same thing and is still basically doing the same thing 1588 for the sellers uh, almost 1500 for the buyers so yeah you get account 1500 for one of those nullsec minerals one year high points yet again uh, which becomes you know more expensive stuff in general in tech one uh, potentially as well very impressive move on all of these and uh, well i have been hoarding a lot of my minerals so whenever i would do like exploration or i clean out some anomalies i do tend to just throw out a um a tractor unit as well uh, so i got all of that loot and you know if you're lucky you get a couple of smart bombs or stuff like that there's noxium in there there's hydrine in there so there are things that i also refine and i do slowly but yeah at these high prices it can make a, a difference uh, i am slowly also you know possibly taking advantage of some of these high prices it's super slow but it's something to note that cleaning out a site and then breaking it down to the raw materials you can then wait for the right opportunity and yeah we may just be in the right place to try and unload some of that mega site and that zydrine uh, because at the moment i'm also not really going the industrial route uh, I personally feel that it's it's pretty complex, uh, especially if you want to get to those higher margin, more complex types of uh, items to make and with structures it in the state that they are. It's not something that I'll see myself do. So I'm staying liquid, uh, but I'm trying to take advantage of these market opportunities as much as possible. And then finally, we get Morphite, which I think we can we can uh, use potentially a little bit as a general uh, um, barometer of what's happening supply demand wise and you can see that we're actually going down a little bit at the tail end here uh, 41 40,700 for the sellers and 38,000 for the buyers uh, which for me is another indication that well it's the priority for mining and so you know on at the high end of things mining will keep up with the supplies that we've known for the last couple of months but it's summertime demand wise we're probably seeing a drop in activity next up we've got the pi market 22 10 let's say there we go and let's see what the impact is here so we get broadcast notes uh, pretty stable at a just below average price but it's still reasonable almost 1.5 million for the sellers 1.3 for the buyers so uh here yeah it's it's the same uh, story uh, it really depends on what you're expecting uh, i do think demand will drop off due to the lower activity um supply wise it's as passive as it gets so my expectation is pressure on the price but I may be wrong on that. We'll see, of course, how it works out. Then we get construction blocks that are actually back above 8,000. It's not able to push back to 9K, which we've seen in April and May. But uh, an upwards move on some volumes is quite clear here. 8,200 for most sellers, 7,9 for the buyers, which is, in my opinion, still a very reasonable price if you're looking at this one-year chart. Then we've got coolants. That's, yeah, again, a little bit of an upswing in the last week, the last 10 days or so, but those high points, January, February, well above 10K, that's not possible at this point anymore. 8,900 for the sellers and 8,7 for the buyers. That's really a narrow margin. I'd say that there is strong demand for coolants at the moment. But I would still consider this, despite the chart, a sell opportunity. I would actually sell at the moment uh, as much of the stuff that I'm producing. Then we've got enriched uranium, um, flat at 10k, which is, again is a really good price compared to everything else. 10,000 for the sellers, 98 for the buyers. So the demand is there uh, to sustain this price for now. Uh, with a high point at 12.5 and 11k in the month of March, April. It doesn't look like it's the best time to sell, but I again still think that it's a pretty good time to sell. Integrity response drones are starting to drop off below 2.5 million. Yep, buyers, uh, sellers, excuse me, just above 2.4, buyers at 2.2 million. So uh, Siege Green update uh, really increased their value. 
and uh, we're starting to probably also see a little bit of supply side adaptation to that new reality that will eventually push those prices back down a little bit more i think then we've got mechanical parts which did that surprise bump to 11k last week but we are back below 10 is that correct uh, no 10 120 for the sellers 9 120 for the buyers so a bit more margin than the other fuel related pi materials but again 10,000 disc very very good price uh, and at the moment yeah mechanical parts is something that i actively sell as well in a mars space though uh, then we get uh, miniature electronics that managed to do that bump as well up above 11,000 disc i did not expect that uh, but here we are 11 420 for the sellers 10 1900 almost for the buyer so pretty strong demand for miniature electronics uh, this to me is another pronounced stop and another pronounced sell opportunity uh, nano factories went back above a million shows a little bit of sign of strain here down to 980 for the sellers 950 960s narrow margin that that demand is to me quite surprising it could really be that there is basically after the siege green update enough demand from larger groups to produce bigger ships that we will be able to maintain the prices a little bit better than what i'm currently thinking but uh, we'll see we'll see how it all uh, ends up working out over the summer organic mortar applicators right last week again bumped up to above 800,000. starts to give back some ground on that just below 800 for the sellers 700 for the buyers so that demand isn't as strong volumes are down as well in the last week but able to hold on to a pretty damn reasonable price recursive computing modules are going uh, down a little bit here more in line with what i thought the general charts would look like 820 to 780 then we've got robotics actually still not bad just below 75k at the moment 75.4 for the seller 72 for the buyers best price we've seen all year uh, so again for robotics if you're making that stuff you can definitely try to sell i think rocket fuels are quite high as well bumping up to that 11k uh, as well here for the sellers 10.5 for the buyers all right where the hell is all of that demand coming from but here it is then we got self-harmonizing power cores back at 225 million as well 22 for the sellers 21 for the buyers really narrow margin on that smart fab units well not that great but you can see that those volumes are basically a bit too low for that to really break out 55k at the moment sterile conduits actually up for the week a little bit as well 920 to 900,000 for the first buyer as well so yeah i'm i'm curious if you get a if you if you have an explanation as to why demand for pi actually feels structurally still very strong narrow margin between sellers and buyers and well, when you get those lower volumes like here with the supercomputers we're struggling a little bit 70k still reasonable though 64k but uh you know ubiquitous ones like mechanical parts coolants um, and a lot of these advanced pi materials are actually seeing super narrow margin on close to one year high prices here synthetic oil for instance right volume wise that looks a hell of a lot better and we're basically just coming down from that one year high point but we are still looking at sellers coming in at 9400 disc 85 for the buyers so definitely not bad at all synthetic synapses uh yeah tied to implants so probably a slightly different story bumping up 200,000 disc on this one 95 to 90 still really nice price transcranial little microcontrollers also having that same little bump 85 to 76 then we get a water cooled cpu i think yeah not that common this one right volumes it looks decent but price wise not doing too much 5k to 42 and then finally with where mainframes that i would say are also above average at the moment at 1.7 million for the sellers and less or, or above 1.6 million i should say for the buyer so again a pretty narrow margin this does surprise me a little bit if you look at what's happening with minerals if you look at what's happening with pilot services uh that yeah there still is flowing a lot within the pi market so it's pretty cool uh, to see and we'll see what the summer brings then next we've got advanced moon materials 2850 why not there we go uh, let's see what's happening here so first of all the carbonites and my theory last week was well the imperium did announce a deployment so uh, maybe they'll also use tech 2 ships since they're so uh, cheap at the moment 
could this be basically a bottom here in mid-June and could we be looking at uh, uh, buy opportunities at the moment well first of all here crystalline carbonite heading back for 100 disc so sellers are back just below 100 buyers are at 93 we got 20 million units coming in so maybe this is something that i didn't think of at the time but of course on lower activity uh, there might just be enough reserves out there to keep all of that stuff in check quite easily and uh, enough sellers that want to take advantage of let's say above 100 disc to crush those prices decently quickly for a very long time so uh, right your immediate response is oh they're going to war this should cut down supply this should increase prices but there is of course potentially a lot of inertia uh, within this market so let's see what the Kaldari one is doing which is titanium carbide that one yeah it's actually telling the story that i was kind of hoping for you could say but here's titanium carbide best price over the last four months back above 150 164 for the sellers 150 for the buyers and obviously those that bought at 100 or below 100 are already looking at a pretty juicy trade uh, can we spot anything in the others here is fernite carbide for minmatar still flat below 100 disc 93 to 90 that actually still feels very low and then tungsten carbide for amar back above 100 disc but clearly no trend break here just yet 109 to 101 for those so so far it's really only the kaldari ones that are making a move the others are still pretty low and at this point i would say it's up to you to decide right um, there are reasons that you could expect this to maybe be a fake out and that again there's enough reserves and supplies out there that this will be taken advantage of prices will go back down and we are still in the oversupply situation or if you think that you know, the kaldari one is basically the first one to hit those problems uh, and the others will follow suit then this is the time to jump in of course let's see what the metamaterials are saying for galente it's photonic metamaterials still very flat uh, not making any moves 7777 for the sellers so 7800 and 76 for the buyers very close to that but yeah close to one year low prices so that's not too surprising then we've got caldari it's non-linear metamaterials also basically flat in the last couple of months at the current range 13.2 to 13.1 <laughs> that's also again very narrow margin right here we could be primed for that upward swing but supplies could very quickly you know take advantage of this high price it's very difficult to try to predict what's going to happen here for minmatar the plasmonic metamaterials are climbing up a little bit but from the one year high point of 10,000 disc so 14k for the sellers and 12.4 for the buyers so slight trade opportunity that was to be had here uh, from a super pronounced one year low point and then we've got terahertz metamaterials for amar that are also basically not moving slowly landing on 10k 10.4 to 10.3 again that's a very very narrow margin kind of getting hesitation here from the market uncertainty closing that uh, price gap between buyers and sellers by a huge margin uh, or, or you know making it super narrow and uh, i think that yeah we could go either way everyone is, is kind of holding their breath will the war become hot enough to disrupt these markets and so are these buy opportunities well there's enough people that believe it to push buy prices right up to those sell prices uh, but there's also of course the potential that the wallets or the reserves from those big groups are deep enough to weather uh, the conflict um, you know if the scale does not become too high and then you could be left holding the bag of course so we got some other uh, advanced boom materials here is fermionic condensates all right a little bit of a jump at least trying to form a bottom potentially here as well not that much supply 46k to 44k then we've got ferrogel same stuff a little bit of a bump is being plugged i would say but uh, that's definitely interesting 23k to 22.5 decently narrow margin here as well fullerites just uh you know absorbing the bump away from that one year low point so we went as close to 400 disc 580 to 532 then we've got hypersynaptic fibers you know flat for the week away from the bottom so that one is not moving too much 5700 to 55 so that narrow margin though is really uh, the story of the week here in advanced moon materials 
buyers bumping right into those sellers even after a small recovery then we get nano transistors that are yeah, also stuck at 2.5 but 2.6 for the sellers almost 2.6 for the buyers so again uh, that narrow margin is here phenolic composites same just below a thousand disc 984 to 963 we get pressurized oxidizers that's actually doing the reverse continuing a downtrend landing on a 7500 oh that icon changed 77275 so pretty narrow margin here as well on the downtrend reinforced carbon fibers also coming under pressure could be of course because of that uh that uh, Pochven uh mining i'm not sure if it's got anything to do with it but pop, pop, pop. can i see what it requires uh, no that's gonna be just moon mining stuff okay i think and then we get ceramic fibers finally that yeah trying to again claw its way away from the bottom so you would expect that maybe uh, a little bit of margin has opened up here 273 to 263 so that is again not a lot of margin between sellers and buyers so that's the story in advanced moon materials basically last week i think if if the war becomes hot enough to really uh, disrupt supplies or uh, you know uh, require uh, a lot of demand all of a sudden to replace casualties and things like that th last week this week could be the right time to jump in on some of them and the caldari where is it uh, titanium carbide you know that's what you would then expect to start happening from here on out um, and in general you could still be all right to do but of course if by next week we're pushing titanium carbide back towards 120 110 or something like that and uh, then it might just not happen so that's really the gamble at the moment in advanced moon materials uh, but you can see that here you get a little bit of volatility right 100 to 160 in a month time that's not a bad trade and uh, potentially quite a few of these other ones are primed for that to happen but who knows how things will evolve of course Next, we have the Tech 2 ships, 3630. Let's see if anything has changed here from last week, where I think, oh, yeah, all right, that starts to look like potentially a change again. You can clearly start to see a little bit of a bottom. Best price we've had in two and a half months here, back above 150 million for the basilisk. In fact, almost 160 now for the sellers, 141 for the buyers. Let's keep in mind though, it is Kaldari, so shield might just be the meta, and uh, that could be the reason why some of them will move up now, some of them will move up later, and then I think I mentioned that last week as well, the theory that I would then be playing with is keep an eye on how hot things get, and eventually the price difference between a shield ship and an armor ship might just become big enough that you will get, uh, you know, uh, groups that will say, no, we're not gonna keep, uh, you know, uh, fielding basilisks at 160 million when we can field uh, gardens at 120 130 or something like that so uh, that's a theory or or a, a thinking that that i'm keeping uh, at, at the back of my mind i do have some take two ships that i've bought you know during the slums but i think i'm still losing on a lot of them um, at the moment uh, but for the active trading i think i'd love to still jump in on those low points which is not probably gonna happen for the caldari ships but let's see what the service is doing um all right well seeing a little bit of pressure on this one so it clearly also bumped up right if you manage to buy for what's the average price here uh 130 million and you can now sell at 167 that's not bad 145 for the buyer so we're definitely up on that one a little bit um so there is a bit of a trade that was to be done here uh, but this one belies the basilisk has just done its next step to an increased range the cerberus yeah, kind of seeing pressure come in on that one then we've got the curse also up back above 150 as well all right not bad 158 for the sellers 132 for the buyers the damnation back uh, away from the bottom range as well 340 to 290 and then we get the deacon still flat right so this would be my gamble right logistics frigates armor but not very expensive and maybe something that eventually uh, will um, will uh, become uh, part of, of, of a uh, fleet that will be fielded in Nalsec. 16 million to 14.5 million. Nobody's buying these, uh, but uh, 
this is also still basically that bottom price which the basilisk has pulled away from the cerberus has pulled away from but the pressure is back but the curse has done so the damnation has done so uh, so to me it is interesting uh, maybe i'll do a little bit of buying that way then we get the eagle right same story obviously a doctrine ship went back above 200 million isk sees a little bit of pressure from that 187 to 175 but yeah with a bottom two months ago coming in here at 120 ish million uh, that's still tradable so the kaldari trade uh, definitely right here if you bought during these times for kaldari ships i think you can definitely look into uh, selling at some really good prices then we get the eos back above 300 million and i bought mine for 250 ish uh, so 325 to 263 you could say well there you go i potentially have like an almost accidental trade uh, but honestly uh, I plan to use mine, I, I plan to build mine, but I do have a very cheap EOS that at the moment would be in profit territory. And yeah, again, you want to buy for ships that haven't had that bump just yet, uh, might be the plan. Like right here, Ares, right, Interdictor, Galente, so it is... Um armor based not gonna be uh, the current meta but 40 below 40 million for the sellers and close to 35 million for the buyers for an interdictor not sure if we get other interdictor yeah here is the flycatcher for instance that one had its bump because it is Kaldari and it bumped up to well above 50. Uh, it's still at 44 million and above 44 the sellers so yeah at some point right we need interdictors are you going to then let's say that we get another bump on some losses are you going to buy fly catchers above 50 or are you going to uh, try to fill some areas that you can buy below 45 million and get a full fleet of them eventually that might just happen i think uh, just happened in the guardian right we went to a bottom below 130 so obviously again potentially a pronounced buy opportunity but a bump up to 150 is something we haven't seen that often 154 for the sellers and still 128 for the buyers so that's still like not a certainty that will keep going up because the margin just has basically opened up sellers uh, have uh, you know gone up in price but buyers are still stuck where they are but it also does see, show a little bit of volatility and uh, potentially this was a small trade that you could have done as well then we got the heretic another one that to me looks kind of interesting because you again have an interdictor that's selling for 33 million 31 million and the, the shield variant again costing way more uh, like a third more than uh, than the heretic then we've got the hound stell bomber also very cheap uh, 16 million to well below 15 million could be another in my opinion jumping point eventually stell bomber fleets might just be a thing not against take two cruisers or anything like that but if someone is pushed into some battleship fleets that might be interesting uh, Iki Tursa one year low point very pronounced not what I expected I thought we would stall the descent but yeah 495 to 431 said last week I would consider buying I think this week uh, should be even better of course um, unless you guys have like yeah there's a structural reason maybe all of that increased activity in Pochven with the uh, big groups that are now organizing mining activities and things like that in order to take advantage of isogen a side uh, product of that is more supply and trick stuff and thus lower price on this one but very very pronounced one year low point here all of a sudden Iki Tursa below 500 million which most of the year sells well all of the rest of the year sold for well above that so this could be a jumping point unless you expect the potch fan story uh, to be something that that increased activity will remain high and uh, no one is going to disrupt that then we've got the Ishtar, uh, still flat uh, at a very low range as well 137 to 126 for me another one right instead of going Cerberus Basilisk route on, on a small downtrend right, I would probably look at the Ishtar uh, while it is armor but it's a super versatile ship and an Ishtar fleet might just be part of the uh, part of what happens if if and that's a big if of course if they decide to really uh, fight a lot with take two ships in uh, in the deployment of course then we get the Kirin, back to Shields, back to Kaldari, and you can clearly see that the bottom has been formed about a month ago on this one. 19 million for the sellers, 18 million for the buyers, and here it's supply that's lacking compared to the demand. 
Then we've got the Manticore, uh, right? bit of a surprise to me. We did get a couple of bumps above 20 million. We're back down to 18 million for the sellers, 16.3 million for the buyers. Another one that, yeah, if you're still looking for that uh, shield option, then right now buying a few Manticores uh, might be the thing to do. Then we've got the Nemesis starting to climb out as well, trying to probably do something about the big difference in cost, right? Manticore's 20 million, Nemesis 15 was well below 15 million, just like well, where the, where is it? Where the Hound's at the moment, uh, no, also at 15. Yeah, the Nemesis was well below that, so that had to normalize a little bit. Back at almost 16 for the sellers and 13 for the buyers. Still a pretty big spread there though. Then we get the Nighthawk, that's also starting to bottom out, and so I bought around here as well. I'm very, very happy with that. Back up to 283 to 247. I think I bought from a seller at like 254 or something like that. So uh, very happy with that, that I got that cheap uh, command ship. Again, that's that part of the story. I do like, honestly, playing EVE Online in these uh, downturns of activity, uh, because you get massive opportunities to either get some really cheap stuff from other people's efforts that are oversupplying the market, or you can also hoard a lot of stuff that's very valuable or focus yourself on something that's very valuable uh, or that will be valuable once activity uh, goes back up. Here's the Oniros, a logistics cruiser that went to 100 million ASIC. So those price differences eventually that has to give. Buyers are still not budging, but sellers are just completely gone from this market and we're back up to 130. Uh, for the price of an Oniros. Then we get the Purifier back up above 20 million as well, uh, almost 19.6 now for the sellers and 18 million for the buyer. A bit of margin that's closed up here as well. Anything interesting on the Rook? Uh, still very flat. I mean, it is a recon ship, but it's it's Kaldari. So I'd look into that maybe. I'm actually gonna write that one down because I think I could use a Rook as well. Might just be my next purchase. Try to buy a Rook, let's say below 110. Uh, could could be both way to use or as an investment, I think. Then we've got the Sabre. That's uh, another interdictor that's below 40 million. So very, very cheap on this one as well. Next, we've got the Scalpel. Very flat, 15 million, no demand. So super cheap. Uh, what's the scimitar chart doing? Yeah, that's a little bit more interesting, right? Cruiser had a bottom at close to 100 million two months ago and is now going for 148 million buyers at 135 as well. So that shield logistics, again, uh, together with the basilisk, that does seem to be the current meta and they are taking advantage of that. Again, the question that I'm asking myself is, will there be enough action that eventually this will become a problem? To renew, to fill, we could get even higher prices. And then the difference between a Basilisk and a Guardian will just become too big to ignore. And that's when we get the opportunity on those ships that at the moment are still at those one year low points. Here is the slip near at the one year low point as well. Uh, command ship to oof, below 240. Yeah, might just, buy, I'm gonna buy one as well. What the hell? Why not? I might just get all those command chips <laughs> so that I can potentially uh, have fun with those. So uh, let's go and sleep near. Yeah. Writing down my shopping list for the next week. And then we've got the Vagabond that did a little bit of a bump right here. 161 to 145 and just about a week ago. You were easily grabbing that for 140 and below. And then finally we get a Zarmast that's not at the one year low point yet and is starting to stall the descent. Uh, 440 to 393, not a lot of demand for this one. But clearly also at the lower end of the chart for the Zarmast. Um, so at the moment Triglavian is apparently uh, very cheap for some reason. Interesting. Next up, the Tech Tree ship markets. And I misplaced the pin coming in at 48.35. Let's see what's happening here. So uh, I think I read in the uh, subreddit thread about the economic numbers that supplies or mining for gas has gone up as well. 
but of course a lot of that is immediately being absorbed by the faction ships and so for the tactical destroyers here for instance well it's flat at 50 million for the uh, confessor 50 just above for the sellers 47 for the buyers new supply yeah not a lot less than 10 in the last 24 hours uh, I think four six and eight yeah and then still less than 10 in the last 48 hours and then you get a bigger batch coming in a couple of days ago but uh, in general not a lot of supply decently high prices at 50 million and volumes have clearly dwindled then we've got the Hecate that managed to get back to 55 ish but is back at 60 yeah, 59 for the sellers 52 for the buyers bit better in supply here with 33 and then over the last 48 hours you get a little bit more coming in but of course at that premium price then we've got the jackdaw that's back above 55 as well uh, 57 almost for the sellers 51 for the buyers and you basically have some old reserves that are keeping things in check a little bit but new supplies are not that great and then this vapor uh, this vapor doing really its own thing just back down below 50 don't really have a good explanation for that oh sellers at 53 it might just be a chart bug or something here that's causing this uh, because that doesn't look right if i look here it's still 53 for the sellers 47 for the buyers and i don't see like massive supplies or anything like that coming in here so it's basically still a step down in interest uh, in this vehicle compared to the three others that are 50 to 60 million in price or 55 to 60 million in price right confessor no actually confessor is actually lower here hmm which might be why it's drying up. Expect the confessor to maybe go back up a little bit. <laughs> uh, but the big problem is that uh, so much gas is now being taken up by faction stuff uh, that uh, you can see the volumes for these tactical destroyers is down. And I guess that also sort of means that unless someone really decides that, all right, we're still going to pay 50, 50 to 60 million and more for a full fleet of tactical destroyers, they're probably not going to be used. And why would you use very expensive tactical destroyers when you can get cheap Tech 2 ships? I don't think a lot of players are going to do that. So unfortunately, uh, the tactical destroyer market, in my opinion, is going to be quite anemic and will not be a big factor uh, in uh, potential deployments or meta at the moment in Nosek or anywhere really. So then the cruisers, it's a slightly different story. You can see we got more movement, more range uh, and a little bit more speculation, also better volumes uh, because of course now you can use them and lose them without having to retrain or anything like that. So the Legion is coming off from a high 195 to less than 180 for the buyer. So decently good margin here. This is almost actively uh, tradable. And I personally think that it is because they are still amazing ships to use for a lot of stuff, right? You can use them for PvE, recon, in wormhole space. Uh, you could explore with them. Really, you can do almost anything uh, that you want with them. But they also potentially can be powerful enough to be fielded uh, against, let's say, take to cruiser fleets and things like that. And so this one is a little bit more primed to see more volatility, to see more interest and thus more interesting for trading as well right buy below 180 sell at 195 it's not bad and you can see that it does happen the average at the moment is going down so you're more likely to grab a buy order at this point we'd love to see that well below 180 before we jump in but it's already there on these um, so it's it's interesting uh, to see that uh, the interest and the potential for trading I think has moved from the destroyers to the cruisers and so here is the Loki also coming off from a high you can see those minimum prices starting to go towards 200 million to 16 to 200 million at this point if this has a little bit more momentum especially if we could see minimum price close to 180 you know again that you get a jumping point uh, so this is far more interesting then we get a Proteus same story right went to 200 million starting to go back down a little bit uh, 199 to 181 already quite a respectable margin see those minimum prices below 180 on this chart definitely looks like an opportunity to buy and then we've got the Tengu that is currently uh, going to that high point average price above 200 204 for the sellers buyers forced up a little bit 193 as well and just a couple of weeks ago you could have bought these for 
below the 180 mark again so this starts to feel like it is potentially a little bit more of a, a predictable market with clear jumping points and with sell opportunities that could on top of that i think on a deployment see even more volatility because i can see tango fleets uh legion fleets and loki fleets or loki uh you know super versatile can even get loki logistics and things like that i can see those become part of uh, of the calculus and thus you know the need to buy at the right time for big groups or even the need to buy at crazy high prices so if you're looking to trade uh, at the moment with patience uh, i'd say take two armor ships look like yeah you can still buy those and with a bit of luck you can get those sell opportunities and the volatility is already there in the take two shield ships alternatively i think uh, you know find the right jumping point on some take three cruisers that could be the ticket as well and then finally we get the extra products at 54 50 and there we go i'm choosing uh, the fuel blocks uh, for this one pretty easy but it's been a while and actually i think we saw some some serious swings so let's see what's happening here we went to one year low point on the helium fuel blocks of 12,500, and we are starting to form a bottom here again potentially uh, back up to 14.2 and almost 14,000 for the buyers buyers forced up here as well but relatively speaking of course very very cheap fuel at the moment and i would say that uh, a big part of this is the current state of structures that have gone from well they're being introduced they're super powerful they're actually overpowered and then eventually there comes the nerf bat uh, now it's something that a solo player uh, really cannot afford to do unless they're like in a very unique spot or something like that where they really don't draw any attention uh, but it's uh, it's super risky and so from being you know everywhere they've now again become a group activity uh, they're actually pretty rare there's a lot of competition uh, for them losing them actually can mean uh, quite uh, a lot economically as well and as a result though consumption for fuel blocks has gone down substantially and so just this month we went to one year low point we're starting to go back up from that potentially on like war deployment maybe those groups actually want to again field those structures in enemy space to get their footholds things like that uh, could become part of the equation uh, but the general trend of course for the last year has been down because of basically the nerfs uh, to the structures which has been very bad for those smaller groups and those solo players like myself that uh, were active in the structure playstyle. we'll of course see how things evolve on that front as well but um, from what i understand don't expect anything to change too soon then we get hydrogen fuel blocks right same story went below 12.5 as well on a couple of occasions in the last couple of months we're back at 13.4 for the sellers 13.2 for the buyers so it is a narrow margin the demand is there at the moment for those fuel blocks but the price is of course relatively cheap uh, nitrogen fuel blocks did a bit of a bump uh, just last week but again 12.5 seems to be that bottom range and we're a little bit up from that 13.2 to 13,000 and then oxygen fuel blocks yeah exact same story 12.5 in May and here in early June so that's the low point and then we're up a little bit at 13.4 and 13.3 but fuel blocks are very very cheap uh, as i've said because of course the daily consumption will have gone down substantially with the loss of quite a few structures uh, for quite a few of the players in EVE Online but that's the the place that we find ourselves in so uh, let's uh, let's be patient and let's try to enjoy the game I'm actually enjoying the game uh, and being quite motivated by uh, all of that faction warfare potential I, I could end up being quite disappointed of course if CCP decides to go uh, the full punishing route again right my character has always been I want to be solo and I want to be able to go anywhere I want so what I don't want is to uh, you know make my allegiance for Galente and then not be able to fly in um, Amar or Kaldari space anymore that would be an absolute breakpoint uh, for me but if I could do um, you know some stuff to help them without necessarily uh, losing all of my status with other parts of space that would definitely be something that I'm interested in and that I might actually take part into but we'll see of course and as always I'll keep you guys up to date that's it for this Eve talk thank you very much for watching and as always I'll see you next time